Hello, so we're here at the ProLight and Sound Show here in Frankfurt and we're here with Raul from Viozo to talk about how you can align projectors very, very easily. All right, so to align projectors, we all know the task. As soon as you come to a point where manual hand warp or recalibration due to a fixed installation is requested, we can help with our camera-based system. So what we do per projector, we would establish test patterns detecting pixel positions, building the RAMs as much as pixel reassignment coming from the render in terms of taking care of the needed warping to have a geometric correct um, image later on the surface. Perfect. So I'm right in saying that in short, then this allows you to then host uh, projected images on a huge variety of different sort of complex services and like real wide landscape sort of projected images all of a sudden. That is exactly correct. So yes, uh, the ability of that system starts where in fixed installation, which might not that be complex, like in a museum where you have two or three channels on a flat surface, but you do not have the needed, let's say, ability in terms of technician on site, you don't want to invest in that team, then you invest in our system, we survey always the quality and can always reassure the best possible image quality in terms of warping and blending by fixed installed camera and then an automated trigger which can recall the calibration every morning before you open the museum. But obviously there are very complex projects where a manual um, alignment is close to impossible. Looking for example here on uh, the uh, Arcadia Cliff in Saudi, uh, which is done with 84 projectors using 12 cameras to detect all that surfaces as much as then correct eye point as well. As the cliff is quite high, we would be positioned down here. If you would not adjust the eye point, we would just not see the image correct as it was supposed to be. So the thing is intriguing me, so you've got the large image here, you're saying 84, 84 projectors, 12 cameras. What's the, where do you start? Where's the approach then for trying okay, to usually, align the cameras, etc.? Yeah. So usually you would have a UV map yeah, already off that cliff, telling you very much about the three-dimensionality complexity. And from this, then we can start once we see content creation, saying we have our structure. On that structure, we wrap around our, our texture. So that's content production. As much from there, I can then read back the need camera positions and assign the cameras um, on the spot and then start on site doing the calibration work and coming up with the uh, later then uh, ready to go show. Fantastic. And I take it as a nice, a lovely sort of software interface where you can digest all this data and go from there. Exactly. So that's what we worked on in the last years, basically coming from a rather nerdy tool to an easy to use app style tool, which I think in our days it's what the market does demand. That was a large development in the last year, as much as we did now launch our extra play. So not just taking care of calibration here, as much as calibration we take care about playback. Yeah? So we can now have a um, headless system, um, browser based system, where on top of the calibration work we can take care of high res playback with a lot of abilities to look at. So it seems like the barrier to entry for trying to actually come and configure this type of software, so I think me and Sia could probably walk in and give it a go almost. Uh, sorry, you have to repeat that question. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So it sounds like the sort of software seems very intuitive. So maybe myself and Sia could probably almost take a step in to give it a go at some point. Sure. Like any other software, I mean, it's um, there's the first bit to do, which is the system configuration, which is IT stuff. Yeah. So how to create a network, how to set up a network, how to configure GPUs, mosaics, and stuff like this. Once it's done, yes, I can agree 100% with you. After a day of training, which we offer remotely, um, all of us should be, regardless of generation and user skills, uh, able to run and use, enjoy our software. Well, I wanted to ask you about that piece there about like a system integrator. So typically, that's how you would work. They would come to you with a project, or, and I know that you work with a number of different projector manufacturers, not just one. So typically, if you just walk us through that, how that kind of piece works between you and a system integrator and then your involvement with whatever um, manufacturer that you're working with. Okay, yeah, quite easy in the end because exactly as you mentioned, there are system integrators, which are our clients obviously, which 
are having quite a tool set already on board, but if it gets too complex projects, they would come to us saying, hey, you know, we have the concept already assigned from a creative agency. Can you help us in creating the right answers, solutions for that project? We would take then over the full planning, assigning projector position, camera position, all the hardware side. With this uh, system integrator can go on site, do the setup. We then happily come in, either remote or on site, wearing t-shirt off system integrator and do the magic on site. Then later, the system integrator can go back and just create his show and use, enjoy the tool. But as you just mentioned, we do exactly one more step saying wherever projectors and that's what we're just launching now with digital projection um, are in place which do bring the ability of in incorporated view the software within the projector heads then you can easily reduce the number of server playback channels which is costly just feed a stack for example with one a uh, signal chain and then the projectors within that compound will take care automatically or camera based uh, view the calibration. I mean for this kind of stuff my experience is that the SIs are very specialist at this kind of stuff so they're going to have a, a certain amount of knowledge but also I think in terms of the IP stuff they're relatively new to that. Is that something you get involved to help them set up that network or is that something they do that independently? Well, we rather, we, we bring them on, 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 on top of things and say that's what you got to do. Yeah. And usually then they go back and have people in the market they relate to. If that's not possible, we might, we physically and, and brain-wise able to stack our brains in there as well. But usually that exactly as you mentioned would be on the desk of the system integrator rather than us. And for example, are you then also able to influence what um, projector they go for? Because you obviously have a lot more experience on how to get the pristine image quality that you want to achieve. Yeah. So yes, as we, we do agnostic um, plannings, oh sorry, we do agnostic plannings, which read back in luminosity needed and lenses needed due to pixel distortion, heat maps, arc minutes and all that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> obviously, we do have, as mentioned, as, uh, uh, projector manufacturers where we are placed our software within their product. So this obviously then reads back quite easy, saying, okay, for mapping, for example, there's digital projection with high luminosity projectors, which are good to go. So we would advise, look at this in that product, but we tend to stay as neutral at the same time as possible. And usually what we always hope for is that the, um, the project will dictate the, the product as opposed to the product dictating on what, what's going on. Yeah, we will, I think we all in our world would hope that the technical needs on the project would create uh, the bomb and the demand. Yeah. Unfortunately, we all know that uh, the end of the song is sung by the budget. Yeah. So this always comes falls back into place. Very often we go do and get encounter or in involved in projects where we saying, wow, you know, if you use that properly technically, you would need this. But then in the end, there are the products chosen, not saying or oh, less less high value project, pro projectors for example saying you should do that with eight projectors because then you have a decent pixel size but then it's chosen to just use four projector which obviously then in luminosity and pixel sizes might differ. So unfortunately not always technics and technical needs are the answer to end of budgets or bombs. So where would people find out more information about Visor? Just go to our website, yeah, www. Uh, Vioso.com, there you find a whole lot of what we do and what we have to offer. And if you have some more technical deep dive questions, go to Vioso Help Desk, easy to find on Google. And there you find full documentation on workflows, abilities of the software packages, and as well hardware packages and cameras, so whatever you need. Like Vioso Wiki, go to Vioso Help Desk. If you want to have a more, let's say, open approach and more on our products, go to www.vioso.com. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It was a pleasure meeting you. Perfect. Cheers. Thank awesome. you. Great. Awesome. Thank you.